What's the rule on the coma, Keith? How often can we do a topic that, that is based upon the conceit that I've been in a coma for a few years and I come out of the coma and then you explain to me what on earth has happened? Keith says once a month for the coma. The coma quota, we could call it. The coma quota. It, I, I wish I could remember this stuff. You sort of stumble accidentally across something that's quite amusing. I wish we could come back to it. In a, I wish we could keep a calendar going. When's the last time we did the coma? What's the coma quota at the moment? Sounds like a culture club song. Coma, coma, coma. No, stop it. The coma quota. I think I did it last week, didn't I? I did it on my first week back from holiday. So we've already used up the coma quota. For the, although it is a new month. So are we doing calendar months or are we doing it on a fort? No, apparently we're, we're doing calendar months. I can't do it today. <sighs> Spoil sport. But if we were allowed to do the coma today, if we hadn't filled up, filled up, used up the coma quota, I would say to you what's happened to British politics. Because yesterday, the front runner to be our next prime minister announced a ridiculous policy, huge and appalling, and then she disowned it within minutes of it being announced. And then she lied about it. Let's start. Let's begin at the end, shall we? So we'll, 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 we'll start with the blatant, barefaced lie. And here's the thing. Not that long ago, probably as long ago as Brexit, but possibly not. Not that long ago, I thought long and hard about explicitly calling politicians liars on this programme. I, I, I thought long and hard I needed to be, before Boris Johnson became Prime Minister, actually. I mean, we spent a lot of time wondering whether people were being dishonest or ignorant, but yesterday we went all in on it. Yesterday we went all in on the very simple question of whether Jacob Rees-Mogg is a barefaced liar or as thick as mince, because there is no third choice, there is no third option. Except, of course, a combination of both, a sort of 52 48% split, 52% thick as men's, 48% barefaced liar. So Boris Johnson's premiership has blown the doors off my traditional reticence and reluctance to speak in such terms about British politicians. And it didn't need to stay this way. We could now be having a Conservative leadership candidate uh, battle undertaken by candidates who resign when they have an appalling uh, misstep, or, or who at least admit that they've made a terrible mistake and apologise for it. We could be watching a battle between candidates who don't stare into the barrel of a television camera and tell barefaced lies. But why would they be different? Boris Johnson was eventually caught out, not really by the myriad lies that he told, but by the casual approach he took to a colleague known to be a sex pest. It, 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 I mean, he lied about that as well, obviously, but it wasn't, the, it wasn't really the lying about it. It was the juxtaposition of circumstance that did for him. All of the other lies from the, from the border in the Irish Sea through to the um, performance of the British economy or the vaccine rollout or whatever else he's lied about, none of that actually mattered. <clears throat> none of that alienated the base. None of that lost him the support of the Daily Mail. The lies about the parties, of course, the Daily Mail spent... I mean, significant amounts of time, energy and money trying to pretend you didn't care about a, a project which failed almost as miserably as Boris Johnson's premiership. The premiership they describe today as an exception to the rule that all political careers end in failure. So why would Liz Truss even think twice about lying through her teeth to you about something she had done that very day? Why would she? Because it doesn't matter anymore. So here's the lie. Well, look, I'm afraid that my policy on this has been misrepresented. I never had any intention of changing the terms and conditions of teachers and nurses. But what I want to be clear about is I will not be going ahead with the regional pay boards. That is no longer my policy. Team Sunak say that this is a catastrophic error of, of judgment. I'm being absolutely honest. I'm concerned that people were worried, unnecessarily worried about my policies, and therefore I'm being clear that the regional pay boards will not go ahead. So she's not only lying about what happened yesterday, she's lying about her whole life because it was when she was Chief Secretary to the Treasury under Theresa May that she endorsed this policy, the, the idea that you could save huge amounts of money by having weighted pay according to regions across the whole of the civil service. If she wasn't talking about regional pay boards designed to cut the pay of doctors, nurses and, uh, I mean, everybody else in the public sector working outside London and the South East, then any, uh, anyone who has the pleasure of talking to her in the coming days would have to say, how were you going to save £8.8 .8 billion? Pounds? How were you going to save £8.8 .8 billion pounds if it wasn't going to affect all of these people? This isn't an opinion, this is counting. 
They announced a mooted saving of £8.8 .8 billion, achievable exclusively and only, categorically only, by doing the thing that she just told you to your face, straight down the barrel, that she had no intention of doing whatsoever. And as I've pointed out, it's a policy that's been floating around Tory circles since George Osborne was in the Treasury and has been explicitly and on the record endorsed by Liz Truss herself when she was Chief Secretary to the Treasury. It takes less than 24 hours to undertake the U-turn, threatening to cut the pay of public sector workers outside London in the midst of a cost of living crisis. It was not just bad politics, the Times reports today, but also bad economics. No evidence that it would work. And even the mayor of Tees Valley, the conservative mayor of Tees Valley, said that the plan had left him speechless. She then denied ever threatening to have done it, accusing the media of willfully misrepresenting her policy. Look at the briefing paper. You will see the figure of £8.8 .8 billion and you will see that policy designed to, to save that money by having regional pay across the whole of the public sector. This is, this is important. This matters, right? In our universe in our parallel universe, in our reality, where evidence is important, where facts matter, where the truth has still some value, some currency, the world that we inhabit, you and I, this stuff matters. The world that Liz Truss inhabits, the world that the electorate for our next prime minister inhabit, and the world that is both populated and polluted by media organisations like the Daily Mail, none of this matters anymore. None of it matters. She can announce a ridiculous policy that is an insult and an offence to the most valued members of our workforce. She can do it off the back of rhetoric, claiming to be committed to levelling up when this p policy precisely does the opposite. She can disown it in 10 minutes flat and then pretend she hadn't done the thing that she's just disowned. And you open your newspapers the next day and the Daily Mail is not only telling you that she's going to be a brilliant prime minister, but also telling you that Boris Johnson's political career has not ended in failure. This isn't normal, is it? I wondered how long my post-holiday ability to step a little bit back, a little further back from the fray would last. I think it might be permanent now. It has, as Montexter has just said, it's all gone a bit the thick of it. That's not even satire. That is the first line of a full-page editorial in the best-selling newspaper in this country. The claim that Boris Johnson's political career hasn't ended in failure. And the same people, the same power, is now anointing Liz Truss for the Prime Minister's job, despite the fact that yesterday she undertook an error so enormous that you can't quite believe it, disowned it, and then denied that it had ever happened at all. God knows what question I'm going to ask you, but I'm very glad I've got that off my chest. 18 minutes after 10 is the time. I'm not allowed to do the coma quotient. So I'll just do this. Why doesn't it matter to these people? And hopefully, why doesn't it matter to you? 03456060973. What has happened to our country to create an environment in which somebody poised to get the keys to Downing Street can demonstrate again, but let's just focus on yesterday rather than the whole history of Liz Truss's appalling career. She can demonstrate epic incompetence, epic incompetence, followed by epic cowardice because she disowns her own incompetence, followed by epic dishonesty, all in a 12-hour window. Epic incompetence, epic incompetence, front-page incompetence, Front page cowardice by disowning it and then front page dishonesty by denying that any of that stuff had happened. And it won't make the blindest bit of difference to the Conservative leadership campaign. It won't touch the sides of these people charged with selecting our next prime minister. And I don't understand that. I mean, look, maybe Brexit, something to do with it. Maybe Boris Johnson's broken something. But I want to hear from you. What's happened to our country? The woman who will be Prime Minister, barring some unexpected event, can reveal herself to be, in the space of 12 hours, useless, cowardly and dishonest, and it doesn't matter anymore.